The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give his angels charge of you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said to him, All this I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in Christ Jesus, I'm sure this is a, a familiar passage from the Bible for all of us, the temptations of Jesus. Just before we try to meditate on the temptations of Jesus. It's good to look into the first reading of today from the book of Genesis. How Satan came and tempted Eve. Now, every time when we look into our Christian life, we feel so much overburdened with lots of laws and rubrics, lots of do's and don'ts. So we tend to think that God is so strict, the faith is so strict, that we, have, we do not have enough freedom to do anything. And that is one of the biggest lies that we have been told or that we have been feeding ourselves in our mind and in our thoughts. Look into the setting of today's first reading. We are in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve is there. And God had given them permission to eat from any of the tree in the garden except from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now the devil has devil is the deceiver and a liar and he's coming and asking Eve to the woman did God say you shall not eat any tree of the garden now he's only pointing to one thing did God say you shall not eat anything he's not asking did God say that you can eat from everything oh it's so wonderful that you can have your fill from all the trees he's not asking any of these things the devil is asking only one thing what you should not do and Eve, the woman replied, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. And this is one thing that we should you know, highlight. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. See, this is the whole aspect of God. God is there to give us life and life in its abundance. In the beginning, we read, God breathed in the nostrils of man and he became a living being. St. Irenaeus would say, the glory of God is a human person fully alive. You know, God doesn't want to be you know, so strict and so, so, so somber that he wants us to feel so sad. God wants us to be fully alive. God wants us to have a fruitful life. God wants us to have a happy life. Now, he wants us to have life in all its abundance. And that's what Eve is saying. We may eat of the fruits of the trees of the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, which is of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, what is it all about? My dear friends, a lot of people say, we have ten commandments. We have lots of other rules and rubrics. And we say, Christianity is all about these, you know, ten things that you should not do. 
or these all these do's and don'ts just look at the wider perspective god is asking you just to keep a few things just 10 things in your life think about all the things that god has given you permission to do think of all the things that god is allowing you to enjoy in your life there are only few things that you are asked to keep away from there are only few things that you should not do but there are millions of things lots of things that you can do in your life and what is all is pointing towards the only thing that is pointing towards is you do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil which means do not place yourself in the same level as god and do not make yourself the whole criteria of good and evil that i do not make myself the supreme authority you stand in relation to god you do not stand above god you do not stand equal to god you stand in relation to god you stand beneath god the first thing that had happened to humanity is trying to be like god trying to be god like i make myself the authority that decides i make myself the criteria of good and evil now let us come to the gospel of passage of today we go into the desert now lent is all about our desert experience why desert is portrayed as a place where there is no distractions there are no distractions you see during the lenten season we have stripped our altar bare there are no decorations we only have few candles on the altar there are no decorations on the sanctuary even the music is torn down so we keep away from all kind of pomp and all kinds of distractions so that we can focus on the basics and necessities of our life and that's what a desert experience is all about we just take some time off some time we just stand back you move into the desert so that you can be away from the distractions and you can focus on the necessities of life that you should take care of now these three temptations of jesus is not three particular events that happened in the life of jesus no don't think that these three temptations are three tiny particular events no these are the three places three criteria of temptation or three levels of temptations that every human person goes through and in the book of hebrews we have read jesus is a high priest who have gone through all the sufferings of humanity by becoming human except sin he became like one of us now three these three levels of temptations of jesus is the three levels of temptations that we face as a human person in our day to day life and what's the first level of temptation the devil is asking jesus as he is hungry after 40 days of fasting now if you are the son of god command these stones to become the loaves of bread now if you are in the place of jesus you know after 40 days of fasting everything that is around or everything that is long looks like a bread uh, like after a few days if you fast for completely for few days you become so hungry that anything that appears before you is a food now the devil is challenging the ego of jesus is asking jesus to disobey god to put himself above god and decide what he should do if you are son of god why do you wait why do you have to be humble why do you have to be you have to place yourself in obedience to the father you don't have to do that if you are son of god do what you want if you are son of god satisfy your sensual desires if you are son of god satisfy your sensual desires my dear friends in jesus this is the first basic level of temptation that any person in the world would face satisfaction of sensual desires that is what we are always after we are always looking to satisfy our needs satisfy our desires and we are sometimes ready to go to any extent to satisfy ourselves that's what devil is tempting jesus to do you don't have to be in obedience to the father no don't think that sensual pleasures in itself are very really bad food drinks water air shelter 
all the sensual pleasures they are good but when you keep in check with god when you keep it in check with god these things are not the highest point of your life the sensual desires are not the central point of your life that's where you go wrong when you make these sensual desires your satisfactions as a center point when you make them god when you make food money sex all these desires of your body into god you place them at the level of god you desire you determine i say i will i want and i will do it that's when you give the highest priority to your sensual desires that's when it becomes wrong so jesus is being tempted to satisfy his desires and during this lent the base of all our temptation satisfaction of our sensual desires check it out examine yourself do i keep the satisfaction of my desires of my body my bodily desires my sensual pleasures at the central point of my life or do i keep god above them or do i keep god beneath them and jesus says man shall not live by bread alone which means man needs bread but bread alone is not the whole criteria of the life of a human person but by the word of god but he lives by the word of god that proceeds from the mouth of god let's move to the second level of temptation now the devil is taking him to the highest point of the temple the devil is taking him to the highest point of the temple now temple is like the prestigious thing of the jewish faith and to be the highest point it's all speaking about power the hunger for power and i want to i want to be powerful in my life now the devil is saying pride sorry it's all about pride you keep yourself at the top of everything the top of the temple and devil is asking jump down jump down so that people can notice you so that you keep yourself so important that you want god to come and assist you you want god to come and assist you it's all about the pride of life it's all about the pride of life you keep yourself at the center of everything and you say i am the most important of everything you keep yourself centered you are at the center of everything my dear friends in christ jesus in our day to day life we feel so upset we feel so sad we feel so worried when people doesn't cater to us people doesn't appreciate us others don't you know look after us we feel so bad because we want to be at the center of every attention we want to be at the center of every attention we want we are so proud we are so into the sin of pride so jesus is asked jesus is asked by the devil throw yourself down from the top of the temple and he is quoting the scripture to fool him and jesus says do not test your god do not test your god god is the highest point of your life you are not above god you are not the highest or the most important thing in the whole world that you say that everyone should come and attend to me and the third temptation is where jesus is led to a high point to a hill top devil is saying see i can give you all this i can give you all this if you just bow down and worship me i can give you all this if you just bow down and worship me and this is all about the hunger for power manipulation i want to be at the top of everything so i can keep a change i can keep authority i want to have control i want to have power power is in itself not bad what is power the ability to effect a change you can bring about a change into the society into your family into the environment that you live in but when you make power the highest point of your life when you look into power higher than god when you keep power as the sole point of your life there you go wrong now devil is a liar from the beginning he's telling jesus if you just bow down and worship me i can give you all this for to, for devil to give you all this to jesus he should have possession of all this which we know he doesn't have 
And this is how we are fooled in our day-to-day -day life. That we think when we have power, we have everything. No. My dear friends, take these three things of our life. Pleasure, pride and power. Examine ourselves. Do I keep these three things, these three levels? There are some people who are so staunch and so determined that sensual pleasures doesn't appeal to them. But they become so proudful, they so pride in themselves that they know that they can overcome these sensual desires. And some people are so staunch in the pursuit of power that it can be very ascetic. They do not give in to sensual desires. They are not so prideful about themselves, but they are after power. So this is, this is a gradual progression of how the temptation is keeping and seeping into our life. As we are offering this Mass today, let us look into ourselves and pray to the Lord. Give us the grace to keep our sensual pleasures and desires in check, that I don't keep it at the central point of my life. Lord, give me the grace to be humble, that I do not want to be noticed, appreciated, loved, cared, praised and extolled all throughout my life. That I want to be at the center of everything. That I don't want to be the most important thing in the world. But God is the highest criteria of my life. And pray, God give me the grace not to go after power as the only thing on, in my life. Not to keep power, attaining of power and authority as the highest point of my life. Rather give me the grace to be humble as a servant of all as you were. May the good Lord bless us all. Amen.